So this was a couple who were married in 2005. Um, the husband was 10 years older than the wife and had been married before, and so he was insisting on a, a prenuptial agreement. Um, he, he, in fact, was so insistent that they had to have a prenuptial agreement that he wouldn't agree to invitations to the wedding being sent out until an agreement was in place. Um, this was, of course, because he had substantial pre-marriage assets, something like 32 and a half million, whereas the wife had very little. Um, they subsequently negotiated uh, an agreement with the benefit of legal advice, and an agreement was signed three months before the marriage. That agreement provided for um, um, 500 pounds, uh, sorry, 500,000 uh, pounds for each year of the marriage for the wife, capped at a total of 12.5 million. And then after eight years or the birth of a child, in addition, she was to get 50% of the value of their London home or 50% of the increase in the husband's assets over that period, capped at 42% of his net worth. There was also provision for maintenance and school fees. Um, then in 2019, the husband gave notice of an intention to divorce. At that point, enforcement of the prenuptial agreement would give the wife a £7 million Duxbury fund, uh, plus £4.75 million for housing. Of course, the wife sought a greater amount and alleged that she'd been coercively controlled by the husband. Husband issues a show cause application as to why the wife should not be held to the terms of the prenuptial agreement. Um, the decision in that case was, first of all, that there was no evidence of coercive control. And in fact, the judge was quite critical about conduct being raised in an issue that he said wasn't relevant. Um, he said that the parties had been represented by first class solicitors and the outcome was well within the bracket of the cases that we usually see. Uh, he decided that the wife was not under undue pressure and there was full disclosure. Accordingly, um, the prenup was not unfair and she should be held to it. Do you think it's fair to say that we're moving in the direction of the parties being held more strictly to nuptial agreements by judges? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think as provided an agreement meets needs, and that's really, really important, and provided there are no other vitiating factors, then I think people really need to expect to be bound by these agreements. So as long as there is full disclosure, legal advice not necessarily, although that's helpful, um, then it doesn't really matter the circumstances in which they were negotiated or in which jurisdiction the, the agreement was uh, finally signed. It's a really important document and people need to expect to be bound by them.